Now what I wanted to do today, I wanted to pass on a little tip, one little tip anyway, our good friend John Pothier who did all these decal layouts, all the computer work. He was my editor when I was a professional writer. Of course, I'm not a professional writer anymore. But anyway, he made me look better, to, better than I really am. But one of the tricks he said to try, now he's just restored a 62 vet to mint condition. And I've seen pictures of it, it's absolutely mint. He said, try this, before you wet sand out a part. Now this part has two coats of clear. It's got dust in the clear, it's got a couple little runs up there. Things we're going to sand out without no problem at all. He said, just take a plastic bag and you know what? When I did this off camera, I said, whoa, that, that really does accent. I can feel a little, the little spots up there. So this is really, and, and what I'm going to do is go over the whole part and in my mind kind of figure out where now I need a, a lot of spots in here need addressing. Up in the blue here, there's some dirt or dust or whatever. Now, of course, we don't paint in a spray booth, of course. And right on the eye on Kawasaki, there's a little bit of a run. Now, the, the point that I wanted to make is none of these things are a big deal. All of these things can be dealt with in the clear. And I just want to well, just use one example here of something that we can do. Because Basically, the hardest part of any finishing job, the part that separates a spray can job from the next level up being like a stock finish on a car to where it's show quality is there's no imperfections. If I go look at my Volkswagen Jetta, it's nice paint, yeah, 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 but if you look at it real close, or if you took one, I was dying to do this one day, just take one part of one fender and sand it out with 2500 grit and buff it, but then what happens, the whole car starts to look a little ratty. So anyway. And a lot of times, cars typically have the, or even stock motorcycles, the minimum amount of clear. So as soon as you sand it, if you overly get overly aggressive, you're screwed. Anyway, I'll, let's just see if I can pass some of this little stuff on. Now, what I did with the plastic bag, I picked up that spot right there. Not sure if you can see it. But there's, there's a dozen of them right there. So before I go to sand the whole part out, I've got to make a decision. <clears throat> Normally, if a part doesn't have a lot of sharp edges, like the helmet we did a couple days ago, if it's all round, flat, a fender on a car, I like to use 320 for the base sand out. In this case, I'm going to go to 400 for the reason is there's a lot of sharp edges, and I, tr I don't want to go through any edges I don't have to. I'm going to try not to go through the edges. So let me just position this part in a way and see if I can... See if it's my lucky day. Now with, with the little wood block, the hard block, because I want to get out. If, it, if it's a valley, I want to sand down to where the valley disappears. If it's a mountaintop, I want to remove the mountaintop. So I'm just going to do one little part here. And I'm going to go right up to the decal, but not. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go onto the decal with the sanding block. Because what might happen, I'll catch an edge. In other words, I don't, I don't have enough clear on here now to absolutely do that. Now a lot of people think, and, and even people that are really good finishers, that you need to repair all these little dings and dongs and everything early in a paint job. And yeah, if you were doing pearl white, you're doing a, a color that's really gonna be, you're gonna notice a little speck of dust. But this paint has so much pearl, this Camaro paint, it has so much pearl and so much metallic in it and it, it's, it just covers everything. It's really, it, this actually is in, in, the, in, the, in the scale of things, this is an easy color to deal with. White pearl probably being the worst. That would show the tiniest little imperfection. Now, here's the, here's the thing to show. We're halfway through this. Let me show this. Now let's see, it's right here, and when it, let's see if I can candle it. This is called candling. See, I have to you look through the camera to see if I'm picking this up. Right there, you can see the little spot is still there. Now, I've got half of the mountaintop knocked down. I don't want to knock it down to where I go through into the green, so from this point on, I'm going to be really, really careful. I'm just going to be gentle.
and that's one little spot. I would think a part like this is a couple hours of sanding. But again, what I try to do is you know, entertain myself, watch TV, listen to radio, uh, re recite poetry, I don't know what. Dream about the good old days when men were men and women were men and children were men. But anyway, because if you don't have company, which I very seldom do, basically doing this by myself. Now, after that amount of sanding, I think what you're going to notice is, and this is a good demo part, we now have, and if I candle it, candling being I'm picking up the light. And it, it is no high spots in there now at all. So now what I want to do now, I've, I've basically gotten rid of one of the problem areas. I want to look for another. This one looks pretty good. Don't have to deal with that. This part you're not going to see. We have a, it, I'd call that a run. It's just a little bit of a, a little extra paint and it's when it was drying it was laying down that way. Again, this is nothing, nothing that can't be dealt with easily. So the first thing I want to do, I want to sand the whole decal first. I want to get it good and rough. And then what's going to happen, I'm going to start picking up that mountain top. And as I start picking up that mountain top, hey, it's good that we have, these, these are easy things to demonstrate on a video. And I'm trying to cross sand. I, I really like not to be too aggressive over the decal at this point. I just want to make it that, that, that I can't feel it. As soon as I can't feel it, I'm pretty much done. I'm almost done up here, in fact. And with a grit like 400 or 320, this goes relatively quick. And we only have two coats of clear on here. So after we have three or four coats, then you can just grind away. But when we do that, we'll be using a lot lighter of a grit of sandpaper. Now, again, sometimes it's difficult to demo exactly what's going on here. But we'll give it a good try. Now, I'm at the point. Let's look at where this is. I'm halfway there. I can still see the little edge of the decal. See the little shine as we candle it little shine out here so I know I could sand a little bit more delicately but out here where the run is now I've got 90 percent of it out so I don't want to go back up and sand into the decal I'm going to sand this way but go right up to the decal and this is going to be a little bit of a delicate operation because what will happen if I get too aggressive I'll cut into the decal itself and then have to do a repair so I'm using the block and I'm going right up to that spot now one thing, doing motorcycle parts is relatively easy. I wouldn't even say it's relatively easy, it's simple. Relative to doing wooden parts like balsa wood or some of the parts that you can't really press on. And in the case of a model airplane, problem is you can't put, you'd never put this amount of paint on it. You'd, you'd turn an airplane into a car. So what happens is with this, we have so much leeway here, we can really be You'd never be able to do this with a model airplane, but on the other hand, a lot of what we do applies to model planes too. Now, I would just guess from looking at this, that's gone. See, now from this point on, again, I just want to show this. And obviously people that are not interested in this, you want to just go buy a new motorcycle, that's cool too, but I can see the edge right on the top of the Kawasaki, I can see a little shine there. So I know I'm a minute or two away from having it perfect, and as soon as I get to the point where it's flat, then you have to have the common sense to stop. You've got to know that that's it. Now the next coat of clear will bury this. We'll cover it right up it'll be it should be perfect in fact these panels started out as being just really dumpster panels they needed repairs tabs carbon fiber repairs they needed a lot of work 
means nothing. If you're going to repair it, repair it. It's, you know, and my analysis always was when I bought the first couple of houses I owned, I bought the oldest and dumpiest house I could find for the cheapest price. Because I knew I wanted to put a kitchen in and put a bathroom and a shower and everything. So why not just, why pay top dollar for something that's half done and you're going to do it over anyway. So same thing with a motorcycle. The dumpier the bike you buy, you're going to paint it anyway. You're going to, you're going to probably do other work to it. And when you're done, there's no point starting. It would be ridiculous to start with a brand new bike and redo it. It would just be, I don't know, but I guess people do do that. I'm not one of them. Not. Anyway, if I could just show this, and we have this totally flat. And the beauty about this is no matter what type of motorcycle you're attracted to, a nice bike is a nice bike. Whether you like sport bikes or adventure bikes or custom bikes or one of a kind, cafe racers, Harleys, choppers, whatever. Nice paint is nice paint is nice paint. Okay, so I want to dry this off. And again, what I'm looking for is shiny spots. And I think pretty much we got that under control. The next coat of clear that'll go over that, there's no hint of a run anywhere. That should go over that just beyond perfect. And if you looked at this part when we started with it, and what I'm going to do when this is all done, I'm going to take flat black paint and brush it in here. So you don't see how, how rough this is with all the Bondo work. But if you look at that side, I think that's really going to be a nice part when I'm done. Now, as I always do, I always try to, the, the motive here is to pass some information on. Because I think that my world gets better the more people get interested in working on their own stuff. Whether it's airplanes, motorcycles, painting a guitar, making a train layout for my grandson. Just when you make things with your hands, at the end of the day, there's, there's a reward to it. Now, no matter what, I'm sure that's the same if you're a cook or if you work in a car wash or whatever, but I really enjoy, and I don't know why, having stuff that started out real old and in the end it looks beautiful. Malcolm's Yamaha gas tank, which is on YouTube as one of the, the things. The RD seat that we made from scratch. The most complicated part I've ever made was the front fairing headlight shells for the R1. That was a mo very complex part to make. I had to make molds and everything. Again, it's all out on YouTube. And it isn't, it isn't like any of this is secret stuff or stuff you couldn't find. Some professional that had a body shop and had a, uh, a spray booth and had a $100 spray gun and da, 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 da. That's fine. But the average person that's working on a motorcycle would like to do it without, without having to invest in a body shop. And that's what I hope I can pass on to people is I'm doing this in the cellar of a house where I can't make a stink. I can't make, at some point in time, too much noise that I disrupt the whole neighborhood. I try to keep it all low key, but it's all a little technology. And I've, I've learned this over the course of, I started doing this in the 60s. And I started doing some pretty nice stuff, probably within a couple of years, because I worked on stuff constantly and I wanted it to get better. In those old days of lacquer and acrylic lacquer, boy am I glad they're behind us. The paint that they make now, and, uh, and my good friend the Jot is learning this on a, daily, on a daily basis every time he comes over here. This paint is so easy to use. Anybody can get this kind of a finish. There's little pitfalls. Everything you can buy is relatively easy to find. There's no, there's no, it's not like making a nuclear bomb where you can't buy the plutonium. So, then I like to end every video because, because I'm a show off, I guess is the right word. Just looking at what we did today. We got that flattened down nice. We'll get over these decals. You saw this one in real life. I'll eventually have the whole piece. That whole piece will be exactly like this. And at some point in time, and it would be the helmet, the only part isn't up here right now is the helmet and the other fairing half. And I think if, if you go back to when we started this project, and look at how it's evolving. 
I mean, I, I'm real happy with it. I'm, I'm thinking somewhere down the road, I'm going to have a lot of years of riding this bike. How, who knows how many track days we're going to do, but we're, we're already thinking about our track days, and it's still two feet of snow out there. But anyway, and I always end it with saying my, hopefully, my email is windyu at AOL. And if you go to my YouTube dedicated channel, it's Windy Space U. I'm, I'm glad to help with any questions. Any of the people from the world of model planes know I'm always available. And I hope you enjoy working on your project. And we're going to have a couple new projects. I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. we got some new projects coming very soon. Anyway, thanks for watching.